<clears throat> hey, hey y'all. So good to be on here and be praying with you guys again. I'm going to wait for some of you guys to jump on. Um, but it, today is March 26th. Hey, Sarah, good to see you. It's March 26th, 7.40 p.m. For those of you that might be jumping on a little bit later. Hey, Yolanda. Uh, let's just open up in prayer before we go any further. Lord, in Jesus' name, we just pray right now that you'd be with us and that you would uh, add to us, add to this conversation, whoever you'd want to be here, uh, add to those who would join this prayer time. Uh, and we just pray that you'd meet us and that you'd join us and that uh, you would respond to our prayers and that um, our hearts would be shaped by your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, hey, Debbie. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, Debbie, how you doing? Good to see you. Excuse me, just had a little cough there. I'm, that's all I have. It's just something in my throat. Anyway, um, I just want to tell, if you're new, this is what we normally do is um, I'll share a little bit here, um, a little, um, some scripture, and kind of focus our prayer time, and then we're going to pray. And I'm going to ask you to uh, join me in prayer. Don't just listen to me pray, but join me in prayer. And if you have any prayer requests, go ahead and, and mark them in the comment section. Uh, so we'll do our best to pray for them. And if we don't get to them live, we will get to them um, offline if we have to. Hey, Marcus. Hey, Brittany. Um, so again, thank you for joining me in prayer. And um, we're going we're gonna to pray together. We believe prayer makes a difference. And uh, prayer has a, a couple things. One is prayer uh, combines our heart with the heart of God. But prayer also, the Bible highlights that, that God responds to prayer. And so we're going to pray in all these different situations. Um, there's a lot of different things to cover. Uh, you know, sometimes um, we're going to be praying for people who are dealing with the virus and the impact of the virus that, that's been going on. But also there's some other things going on. Life is still happening. So we're going to pray for those folks as well. And um, so what I'd like to do is um, we're going to read a couple verses here. And uh, I want to start here by Hebrews 4.12. The word of God, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and spirit. So uh, what we see in scripture about the word of God, which is the Bible, is that it actually, when you look at the um, the armor of God, the, the sword actually has a, a couple different purposes. One is it's def it's offensive in the fact that um, that it, it says that it's a sword, so it's something that we can fight with, that we can use the Word of God to speak truth in any situation that we're in, but it also is our basis for defense, that as we have the Word of God in us, uh, our mind and our emotions are shaped by God's truth versus our circumstances, and so um, we believe in the Word of God. Matthew 4, 4 says, but he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so the word of God is powerful. The, the words, words that come from God are truth. And so when we speak out truth, there's power and authority. It's kind of like this. Um, I've never used this analogy before, so forgive me if it doesn't totally relate, but I think it's a, a pretty good visual. If you've ever seen the movie The Matrix, you know that they're living in a make-believe world and, and people are kind of, you know, Neo is kind of woken up to reality. Well, the word of God in regards to this piercing is, is the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword. The word of God cuts through uh, uh, our reality, so to speak, and it allows us to see the truth because we're often blind and we see things that aren't really true. We see things uh, that aren't really uh, the right way. We don't see things clearly. We're, we're not aware of certain things. And so uh, that's what the word of God does. It kind of slices through the things that we think and we see because we live in a fallen world and it peels away that layer and it gives us a new lens to see things in reality the way they really are. Hey, Kimmy. Hey, Sarah. Good to see you guys. So um, what I'd like to do a little bit differently is usually we'd go, we'd go in right into praying for specific needs and we'll stu still do that. If you have prayer requests, please let us know. But I want to focus our prayer a little bit. Uh, if you're a part of Red Church, I know not everyone is that's watching. That's okay. Um, I'm really excited about this week's message because we're going to be talking about how to have the uh, 
how to be on the path to hope. And it's often not the path we think it is. Uh, and so uh, this Sunday, we're going to talk about the path of hope. And if you're, even if you're not a, a, a regular per, uh, attender at Red Church, you can watch our services online. We're going to be streaming those. Everything's online this week. So you can go to our website or to our Facebook Live page. Uh, but we're going to be speaking how to be on the path of hope. And I, I kind of touch on these areas in regards to prayer. Uh, but I want us to look at this. It's really important when we pray because it helps us to focus on the right things. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to practice very quickly three different forms of prayer because it will literally help us in regards to um, how do we have true hope in the midst of whatever we're dealing with, whether it be with the the virus or government or our marriages or our kids or when we feel lonely. How do we focus on these things? And so um, prayer helps us to be able to deal with that sort of thing. And um, so what we're going to first do, and I'm going to ask you to join me, is we're going to pray adoration. And if you don't know what that word means, adoration is basically telling God how awesome God is, focusing how, on how amazing God is. And the reason why, whenever you start talking about this, a lot of people will just check out because we tend to like to pray and just ask God for things. And we're going to do that. We're, we're going to do that in just a moment. So if you need prayer, we're going to do that. Uh, but the reason why this is so important and why so many people don't do it is because uh, when we focus on the Lord, it helps us to take our eyes off the things that we're looking at and looking to that really don't provide answers. For example, if we're going through issues and we're when we're focusing so much on social media and focusing so much on on the virus and on the and and uh, media itself, then we can get anxious, we can get angry, we can get upset, we can get uh, cyn uh, uh, cynical, and so. When we adore God, when we pray and we begin to tell how awesome God is, it helps shift our focus from our circumstances and our stuff and puts our focus in the right place. M many of the times, our thoughts, if you struggle with thoughts that you start to think things that make you anxious, they connect with your emotions, it's because our focus is in the wrong place. So as we pray adoration, it helps focus our attention on the place where our focus should be regardless. And so if you're not a believer and and this is something that um, doesn't connect with you, I just want to encourage you to investigate it uh, because especially if you're if you're um, you're going through some of these things, God really does have the answers. But what we're going to do now is we're going to pray adoration. And I'm going to read this verse Psalm 150 1, 6, uh, verses 1 through 6. <clears throat> it says praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet and sound. Praise him with the lute and the harp. And it continues to go, praise him, praise him, praise him. See, when why this is so important when we pray and we take the time to do this and we talk about how awesome God is, it helps put into perspective what's really important and where hope really lies. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to begin to pray. And uh, hey, Tiffany, we're beginning to pray. And I'm going to ask you guys to be more interactive than normal. I'm going to ask you guys, as we pray about how awesome God is, if you would put in your comments over here, if you would just comment on uh, some of the things that, you, that you're grateful to God for. Not, I'm sorry, not grateful. We're going to get to thankfulness in a minute. But if you would share an aspect of how awesome God is, uh, it doesn't have to be long. It could be one word. Thank you, God, for how strong you are or how faithful you are, whatever it is. Uh, and, and right now, you may not feel uh, like that. You may be focused so much in your emotions and thoughts or so in a place that you don't feel like that. It's okay to be able to put that down and share it in faith, uh, that you're going to put that down and we're going to begin to pray. So join me in prayer. Don't just listen to me as I, as I pray, but join in with me as I pray and, and agree with me. And if you would also type it in the comments, some of the things that, that, um, you will say how you will adore God. You will highlight some of the amazing things of God. Even if you're not right watching this live, if you're watching it afterwards, you can join us in prayer and God's outside of time. And so uh, it, it doesn't matter to him, but join us in prayer. And so let's focus on adoring God right now. Lord, in Jesus name, we just take this time to focus on you because it is so easy to focus on what's in front of us. We can focus on, um, 
the virus itself. We can focus on the news. We can focus on the social media. We can focus on our fear of what might be. But right now, we put our focus where it needs to be on you. And if you would agree with me, just continue to pray with me and and post in, in the comments uh, some way to adore God, how awesome he is, or whatever aspect, his goodness that you want to highlight. Lord, we just ask right now, you are amazing. You are powerful. Uh, Lord, you are faithful when we're not. You don't give up when we give up. You are good when we sin. You are strong when we're weak. You are, um, Lord, you are giving when we are selfish. I just think, I just think right, what Marcus just said, thank you for this, for God is amazing and given us this life, even though we have challenges, God. There's so many different things that we can look at that you've been faithful, Lord, that you can, you're dependable, Lord, that we can look to you and you are stable when we waffle and when we when we teeter-totter and go back and forth, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, God, because you are our Father. For it, whether we have a great Father or whether our Father made mistakes, um, Lord, or even if you're older and your father's passed away, or you don't know your father, God, you are our father, and we thank you that you care for us. You have a father's heart towards us in Jesus' mighty name. We just thank you for that right now, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are merciful. God, you are merciful, God. You, 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 you're, you're compassionate, and we ask, God, that you would have mercy on us and our families and our country in regards to... Um, to this virus and, and also to the nations. We pray, God, for mercy in Jesus' name. You are a merciful God. I just thank you, yes, Lord, that you are a God that's personal. It, it, we're not just a number with you. You know the hairs on our head. You care about us individually. And you are forgiving, God. In Jesus' name, you are forgiving that when we make mistakes and we are when we repent and we confess our sins, we acknowledge it. You're willing to forgive us in Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you right now for those of us that still have jobs for that blessing. And I pray for those who do not have jobs or, or, or kind of in the middle, Lord, that you are our provider in Jesus' name. We thank you and praise you. Melissa, hey, good to see you. If you're just joining on, Melissa and some others, we're just taking the time to pray. We're praying in different ways. We started off by praying an adoration prayer where we are just talking about how awesome God is because we have a tendency to focus on all the negative in our life. And the reason why praying adoration, praying the praises of God is so important is it because it helps us put our perspective in the right things. And so uh, next thing what we're going to do is we're going to pray um, a prayer of thanksgiving. And I'm only giving short little examples here because um, I want to give these little uh, illustrations because some of you guys I know are, are used to praying, some of you are not. And uh, I think it's so important that we can learn to pray some of these basic prayers because in this season, it helps us to be able to uh, put our focus in the right place and that our hope's in the right place. And again, this Sunday um, at, at our online services at Red Church, I'm going to be talking more about this, uh, the path to hope. and. Uh, this is just kind of a, a small snippet of some of the things that we're going to be talking about. It's just one small section, talk about a lot of things. But I'd like to now pray about Thanksgiving prayers where where we just thank God. Because I don't know about you, but it's easier sometimes to begin to gripe about the things that we don't have uh, versus what we do have. And so right now, we may be focused on right now what, whether we have to work and other people don't have to work, or we may be focused on the fact that we can't work or that we're stuck at home or that this or that, or that we have lack of this. We can't, you know, whatever it might be, it's easy to focus on what we don't have. And what it does is when we do that, it doesn't mean that we deny reality, that we pretend it's not there, but our focus can, can, can kind of get into um, a complaining critical mode and not really have a grateful heart to the Lord for what we do have. And so, um, and so I just want to uh, take time. And, and so if you would join me in prayer when we do this, um, we're going to just pray thankful thankful prayers to God. So as we pray, if you want to uh, go ahead and pray with me, don't just listen, pray with me. But also write in, in the comments to the, to the right, give specifics, practical 
things that you're thankful for. And there's nothing too silly. And it's okay to be thankful for even the small things. You know, it's not insignificant. It's important because, you know, my kids thank me for a lot of things. And even when they, they thank me for little small things, it blesses me that, that, that they see that. And it also positions their heart to be in the right place. And so um, that's what we're doing right now. First Thessalonians says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So we're going to give thanks for, for all in all circumstances. Um, so let's just pray. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you. There's a lot going on in the world, but there's a lot of things that we can be thankful for no matter what's going on. There's something we can be thankful for, Lord. Um, we thank you for those of us that have a church family with a church home that cares for us. I know I've been hearing stories all over the place about how people in the church have been caring for one another. Thank you for that. I thank you right now that in the midst of it, that that we have the internet right now, and even that we have this device of Facebook that allows us to communicate and pray while we're we're distanced from each other. And uh, Lord, I thank you for for myself. I thank you for my family. I thank you for um, you know the fact that we are able to go to the grocery store even in the midst of something like this and i thank you god for the grocery store that i went to that while some things are missing there were uh, there were still a lot of things that were there and i'm thankful god that there was these you know even you know we able we were able to have some of the basics you know like meat and bread but god i just thank you for the little things that that you allowed us to get those little hershey kisses for the kids god because i just give you thanks for that because my kids um, they're cooped up in a house but, but Lord, those little things go a long way. And I'm just very thankful for those little things in Jesus name, Lord, we're just thank you right now. Lord, we thank you for our families, for those of us that have families. Um, Lord, we're thankful God that, um, for those of us that have homes and have a roof over our heads, I just am thankful God for, um, go ahead and, and go ahead and write some of the other things that you're thankful for. And even if it's in faith right now, you may not feel like praying in uh, thanks, you might be really frustrated because of what things you don't have. That's actually the more important time sometimes is to pray thankful prayers when you don't feel like it, because often that is what generates and that's what starts and cultivates a heart of thanks, thankfulness, that we can be grateful in any situation. Um, Yolanda, that's a good one. Let's pray that, Lord, I just want to thank you for the extra time that we have with our families. And that the extra time we actually, quite frankly, to be able to spend with God, with you yourself, Lord, I just thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for, I've heard a lot of some of our single people, young people where they are alone right now in their apartments or what have you in their homes, and it is lonely for them. But Lord, I thank you, God, for those young people that they do, the majority of them are young and healthy and the virus isn't impacting them as much as some other people. So I just give you thanks for that, for them in Jesus' name. Um, yeah, I just, Donna, I just agree with that prayer. Lord, we thank you that what was meant for evil, that the that the that that God, the creator of all things, can turn that around for his glory, that he can turn it around and make good out of it. We know a lot of situations are going on, but God can take it and turn it into something really powerful in Jesus' name. Marcus wants to pray for his family and his church. Lord, yes, we just thank you for those of us that have families and spouses. And Lord, even if you're single, I just am thankful that that you have your hand on our friends who are single and that if that's a desire they have to be married, that that you would that you you have a mate for them. You have a you have a, a spouse, a husband or a wife ready for them and waiting at the right time at your time in Jesus name. Amen. So we did an adoration prayer, we did a thanksgiving prayer, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have what we call supplication, or we're going to make our request made known to God. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything for by prayer and supplication, basically making our request known to God with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And so, um, hey, Robinson family, um, so we're going to pray for some things here, and uh you know, I may not see all of them. If I don't see all of them, I'll, I'm going to try to pray for them offline. But um, if you're joining me in prayer and you have a prayer request, post them. And even if I don't see it, for those of you that are with me, please help me to pray for those. Um, but um, so this is what we're going to do. I want to pray right now for a family who just moved to, to um, San Diego. And um, they just, it's 
kind of bad timing for them for a lot of reasons. But one reason, uh, because they're on lockdown as well, like other places, is that they've not been able to find a church family. They're a part of our church family, and they moved out there, and and now they don't really have a community out there. And it's made it even extra hard for them. So um, let's just pray. If you would join me in prayer with them, and uh, we're going to pray for other people who maybe not have a church family. Uh, Maybe it's because they moved like this family, or maybe it's from their own decisions. But I'm praying that that they would be drawn into um, to church families. Let's just pray for this family in Jesus' name. We just lift up this family that's in San Diego that just moved out there and they have not found a church home. So not only are they on lockdown, but they're also facing all of this in a more of an isolated situation, Lord. And I just pray God that you'd be able to get them connected when all this thing is kind of um, over with that you'd get them connected to a church family and maybe even get them connected beforehand that they'd plant roots um, and that they'd be able to develop those relationships. And I just pray for other people right now, that um, for whatever reason are not plugged into a church family, that through all of this, you would grow a hunger and desire for them to connect in a church community where, where they can uh, find friends and and surrogate family members that they can connect with and that they can share their lives with and they can learn about God uh, more together. In Jesus' name, I just pray that that desire would grow. In Jesus' name, that they maybe they didn't even know that desire was there in the first place, but in this particular moment, they become more aware of it. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would send them uh, to various churches. I pray, God, for those that are around our area, you would send them to our church. And there's a lot of other churches in the area and, and across the country. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would raise up that desire in the people's hearts and that they'd get connected in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Cornelis and family, good to see you. So we're going to keep praying. Um, and um, so we've been praying for that. We, also, I, I want to pray for, um, if you would join me join me in praying for our church specifically, um, we really are praying about how, how we can help our community and just becoming aware of, of needs that we could actually meet. Um, and so uh, I know there's a lot of churches right now who are, you know, confined to what they can do. At the same time, there's still ministry needs going on and trying to figure out how that works. And yet, it's also a time where churches are being hit financially. Um, and so if you would, because, you know, a lot of people are getting hit financially in that way, I would just ask that you would uh, join me in praying, one, for our church, even if you're not a part of our church, that God would show us how to be used, but also that we pray for churches across the country to be used by God, and that he would provide the finances and the resources and the goods to be able to help people in need. Um, so that if you would just join me in prayer, Lord, I just pray, first of all, for churches all across the country and even all across the world, Lord, that you would bless churches and that you would help churches know how they can make a difference, that how they can act, how they how they can impact and let your light shine through them in Jesus name, whether it be food or encouragement or whatever ways possible, we pray, God, that you would um, just make it uh, in each church that you'd help them have a way and a path ahead to be able to know how to help. I also pray God for uh, finances and resources and and goods to be able to help to meet the needs in these different areas. I pray, Lord, that you'd help a way that people could get goods and deliver them in a safe way to not put anybody in harm. And I pray even for, specifically for our church, for Red Church. Uh, I pray, God, that you'd help us to know how we can help and. Um, how we can engage our community in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, hey guys. Hey, Walker family. Hey, um, We're continuing to pray here. And if you have uh, any prayers, I ask that you don't just listen to me pray, but you join me in prayer. And if you have any prayer requests, you can put it to the sides. If I don't get to it, or if I don't see it, if you guys would help me pray for those. Um, I would like to pray for two friends of mine. I don't want to say their names because I don't know if the, this stuff's public yet or not. But they've recently got, um, um, basically found out that both of them have cancer and there's different levels and different degrees. And I just want to pray for um, healing for them in in this crazy time. You know, people ask, you know, because my mom just passed away from cancer. Why would I pray for healing when he didn't heal my mom? I believe in a healing God. And 
I don't know why he heals some and not others. I'm not quite sure. I do know that my mom's in a better place and is in a much better situation um, than what we find ourselves in right now. So I just put and just trust in the Lord. But I do know that the Bible says to uh, uh, to seek him and to pray. And we've seen several examples in Scripture where he does heal. And so we're going to just submit these to, to the Lord, if you would. Lord, in Jesus' name. We just pray for these two individuals, Lord. I know them, that they are believers. And God, you have used both of them in a lot of different amazing ways. And I just pray for your mercy. I pray, God, that you would bless their bodies, that you would heal them. I pray that you would bless uh, the doctors as they try to navigate uh, um, a treatment plan ahead. And I pray for wisdom and direction. I pray for peace for their families not just because of this, but because of everything else that's going on. I pray, God, that you'd help them navigate it in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, God, that you'd give them the faith and the courage and the peace to deal with this. But, God, we do ask for mercy, and we pray for healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, hey, Jessica, good to see you. So if you guys came in a little bit later, you can go ahead and go to the front. Of, you can watch the front of the video if you want to and, and catch up. But we've been going through the different types of prayer, and I've been giving different examples of how to do that. Um, and another types of prayer uh, is repentance, that we would repent for some of the things that we've done. And this helps us get our attention off ourself and onto God. It helps us to keep our heart positioned in the right situation where we don't think ourselves as God, because it's easy. You know what? One of the things that's come out of this whole thing is that we can't control our life. We, we can't even control sometimes even leaving our house the way we'd like to. And this is awakening us to the idea that, to the realization that we really aren't in control. And repentance helps turn our attention to God, that we really need Him, and we really can't control our life. And so I'm going to ask you to, that's your homework. So we're not going to do that um, on this call, but that's your homework, that tonight that you go home, you take this moment, and I would encourage you to do it sooner than later so you don't forget Take the time to really repent. And I don't mean like a general prayer, like, just Lord, just forgive me, but be specific. You know, forgive me for talking mean to my spouse or by focusing on the wrong things or whatever it might be. Um, take the time and just repent before the Lord and ask God to forgive you. And I'm just telling you, when we do this and we make this a regular part of our life, it really helps connect our heart to God in a way that we nor don't normally do that. Um, helps us have the right perspective. So. I just want to encourage you, if you're watching this after it's live, if you would continue um, to pray with us and for us um, and watch the rest of this video, guys, and let me know how else I can pray with you all. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, I'm going to close in prayer, but I want to pray a blessing over you and yours. So if you would join me in prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name, I just pray for everyone that's on here right now or will be on here or was on here earlier, I pray a blessing over them, their lives, their families, their homes, their careers, their emotions, their thoughts. I just pray, God, that you'd give them a peace that goes beyond all understanding. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you would um, help us connect with you in a way that maybe we've never connected with you, or maybe it's been a while, and, and this little repeat, preve, or pause, or at least change in how we normally do things helps us to take the time to do so. But I just pray right now a blessing over them, that they know that through Christ, they are the head, not the tail. They are the top and not the bottom. They're blessed at home and at work and as they come and go in Jesus' name. Amen. I also pray, God, for um, a quick resolution to this virus situation. We pray, God, that it would end sooner than expected. We pray for mercy. We pray for healing. We pray for wisdom for our leaders in every level from government to medical to spiritual to community. In Jesus' name, I pray, God, that your voice would be clear and that you would help us to be the lights in the darkness. Show us how to do that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, and I'll be trying to do this a little bit more in the next couple of days. Uh, but keep joining me and keep praying with me. Uh, let me know how you guys are doing, okay? Love you guys. Have a good night.